simple ran Gaussian random variable. Of course, we know that in distribution, x has same distribution as minus x. Okay, but this is uh, obvious. More interesting, we have invariance of the Gaussian distribution by rotations, uh, at least when r in a, is an isometry of rd. The rotated x still has the same distribution as x. And more interesting, we ha also have a similar property for Brownian motion. So if we rotate the Brownian differential, we get a process which is still a Brownian motion. Now, uh, in this case, R, R is just a deterministic transformation, but it can be time dependent. It can even be an adapted process of isometries, and X defined in this way remains a Brownian motion. This is the famous characterization of Brownian motion by Levy. Okay, uh, continuous martingale with quadratic variation, quadratic variation equal to dt. It's an isometry. Now, the question I, I want to ask is what happens in the anticipating, anticipative case? So, in this case, so we, we can wonder about the, more generally, about the invariance of the winner measure. That means when we take a, a simple winner integral and we transform it by some transformation defined in this way. So we apply the rotation R to dBT. That means by duality, we can put the, the adjoint applied to F and integrate with respect to dBT. In this way, when RT is an adapted process of isometries, this defines an invariant transformation of the winner measure. Okay. So uh, in which way is the transformation defined? Uh, of course, if you take some simple function of Brownian motion, such as integral of f1 dB, integral of fn dB, the transformation T is defined by letting this equal to integral of R, uh, maybe dagger f1 dB, R f n dB. Okay. Now, what happens in the anticipating case? In the anticipating case, we can no longer use the Ito integral, and one way to define the transformation is to use the Skorod integral, Skorod or Hitsuda Skorod integral, um, here denoted by delta. That means instead of taking the Ito integral of adjoint of R applied to the function f, we take the Skorod integral which makes sense in an anticipating setting of R daga applied to F. Okay. Now the question becomes, can this define an invariant transformation of the winner measure? So we know this holds when R is an adapted process of isometries. What happens in the anticipating case? There's an answer given by Ustunel and Zakai in 95. So they said that in case R is a um, possibly non-adaptive process of isometries of, of uh, maybe I, sh I should define more precisely what R is. So R is a random variable which takes values in the isometries of L2 R plus RT. So it's a random isometry. And in case, in addition to that, the trace of dr to the power k is 0, almost surely, because this is dr, in fact, dr is an operator from, which goes from, almost surely, from L2 of r plus tensor uh, sorry, uh, dr belongs, sorry, belongs almost surely to L2 of R plus tensor L2 of R plus. What is D? D is the, here is the Maliavan derivative, but it makes sense also in the white noise setting. Um, 
so D defines an operator on L2 of R plus, and when this trace is zero almost surely, uh, then we have the, the invariance. That means the transformation defined in this way, G of integral of F1 dB, integral of Fn dB, composed with T is defined as G for any smooth function of delta of R dagger F1 delta of R dagger Fn. This becomes an invariant transformation of the winner measure. And of course, in the, in the adapted case, this condition is satisfied. Okay, the, the trace is zero when R is an adapted transformation. So what, what I want to do in this talk is, um, in fact, focus on the Poisson case. But before that, I will recall the, the winner case. And I want also to present a, a simplified proof in the winner case before. Later on, we will use this argument in the Poisson case. But the focus of the talk is really on the Poisson case. So how do we, how do we prove the Gaussianity of delta of u? Because we can let u equal r, rf, let's say, and then wonder whether delta of u is a Gaussian random variable. We can look at the moments, because the moments of the Gaussian distribution characterize the distribution. The first moment is always zero for the scored integral. So delta of u always has the correct first moment. And in order to look at the second moment, we use the scored isometry. Okay. So it is known that uh, so delta of u is an extension of the Ito integral. Usually, we have the Ito, in, uh, Ito isometry. That means we don't have this term. Okay. In the anticipating case, we have one additional term which vanishes in the, in the adapted case. And we have this statement, which, which can be referred to as the scored isometry. So this trace term can be written at least in three different ways. So it's always convenient to remember this. So when does delta of u has, have the, the correct second moment? Of course, in case, in case r is an isometry, then the norm of u will be deterministic and equal to the norm of the deterministic function f. Okay. So in this case, when, when we work with an isometry, the norm of u is a deterministic constant. And we will have the, so the expectation coincides with this constant. And we will have the correct second moment of the Gaussian law when this term is 0. So indeed, at least for k equal 2, we get this, uh, this condition. What we need to do is to go beyond the, the second moment. And for this, we can use this type of moment identity. So uh, this is an, a moment identity which extends the scored isometry. It is proved by induction. So I, I will just I will not do the proof, but I will start the first the first step of the induction, uh, which looks like this. So what we want we want to compute this. We apply the duality between the gradient d and the scored integral. That means becomes this. Then we use the fact that D is a derivation operator. It satisfies the, the rule of, der of derivation. So in this case, we get delta of u. We get n times delta of u to the power n minus 1 u delta of du. And here we use the commutation relation between gradient and integral. It's, which is completely analogous to the CCR, canon, canonical commutation relation, which gives us this. And then we continue, sorry. So this will be u plus delta of d star u. And then we, we continue the induction, etc. And we get this kind of result. So this kind of result is nice because we can, the, the moments of the Gaussian law uh, can be characterized using an induc induction relation, which is well known. How to get this induction relation? Of course, when the trace terms are zero, we get rid of this and this. 
and then we hope that the remaining terms will give the correct induction relation. So let us look at what happens. So what we want to do is this, uh, get rid of those two terms, but this will be true as soon as the trace condition is satisfied, and then we focus on the first term, and we expect that the first term will give the correct induction relation. So this is what happens when the, the trace terms have been removed. I look at this sum, I split the sum into the term for, I'm sorry, this is k equal to 1, so it should be n minus 1 here, n minus 1, plus those terms. Now this will give the correct induction relation because we know that the, the Gaussian distribution the Gaussian distribution satisfies this relation. Moment of order n plus 1 should be n times the variance coefficient, which is this deterministic norm, times the moment of order n minus 1. So as long as those terms are zero. And indeed, in the, the isometric case, those remaining terms are zero. So I don't want to, okay. So this is just repeating the same thing. Trace terms are zero here. Um, so there's some argument. We can transform the, the remaining terms in this way and in such a way that we use the gradient of the square norm of u. And the square norm of u is deterministic because we work with an isometry, so this term is zero. And as expected, we just get the, the induction relation of the Gaussian density. So this is for the Gaussian case. Now what I want to do is look at the Poisson case using this kind of method. Okay, so this is just a repetition. In, for random rotations, we have this result. Now I want to look at the Poisson case. Look at the Poisson case and use the same type of method. That means scored integral and moment identities. So how does the, the problem look in the Poisson case? In the Gaussian case, In the Gaussian case, we look at random isometries. Of A2 of R plus R2. So it's very geometric. What is the analog in the Poisson case? It is a, the preservation of mass. Okay, so if we look at the Poisson case, here I take some, um, some space X, and I look at Poisson samples Poisson configuration points on X. Okay. And then I, I look at some I consider some other space, maybe Y. Y can be equal to X by the way. Okay, so if you like you can take it equal to X. And I consider some transformation tau which will map each point of this random configuration to another point. So tau is uh, some mapping from x to y. And there's a well-known result which says that in case we consider the Poisson distribution with intensity sigma, a measure of sigma on x, and the Poisson distribution with intensity, let's say, mu on y, a condition for tau to map the Poisson distribution on x to the Poisson distribution on y is simply that tau maps the measure sigma on x to the measure mu on y. So I, I will try to be more precise. So this is just the Poisson space. So what, what I mean here is that tau will define another transformation that I, I'm, I'm going to call tau star. I, I will write here. So tau goes from x to y. From tau, we can define tau star, which goes from omega x to omega y. What is omega x? It is the space of configuration of configurations on x. Omega y is the space of configuration on y. So from tau, we can define a transformation tau star, which is in some sense the lifting of tau. And the effect, effect of tau star will be in this way. We have a configuration made 
made of points x i's and tau star applied to this configuration will be the conversion ma made of points tau of x i so the question becomes under which conditions is tau star a measure preserving transformation that means it maps the Poisson distribution on omega x with intensity sigma to the Poisson distribution on omega y with intensity mu and the answer is well known in the deterministic case that's a very classical result in, in analysis on, of Poisson measures uh, as long as tau is a fixed transformation that maps x to y then tau star maps the Poisson distribution on X to the Poisson distribution on, on Y with intensi intensity mu. And the question I want to raise is what happens in the random case? And random case here means when tau is no longer fixed. That means when tau also depends on the configuration points. That means the way uh, this point will be sent to this one may depend on the positions of neighbors for example so it may depend on other configuration points we have interactions okay. so uh, so this is just a I'm sorry I should use this slide to explain but it has said here random mapping tau star shifts each configuration points and, and so on now we are going to use the tools of stochastic analysis on the, the Poisson space. So first of all, we use this finite difference gradient, which is defined in, the, in a very simple way. Dx, so it depends on x. I should say small x belongs to the space x, capital X. Okay, and you make a perturbation of the configuration omega by addition on one point of one point at x and you subtract the original value of f so this is a finite difference gradient now the squared integral operator in the Poisson case is defined in this way it looks very much like a Poisson stochastic integral so remember omega is the sum of Dirac measures at the configuration points so this is a Poisson stochastic integral uh, the only difference with the classical Stilges integral is that at position t we remove the point t from the configuration if it belongs to this configuration okay but when u is a deterministic function delta delta of u is the the compensated poisson integral of u okay and that that's the reason why we are going to use delta of u to characterize the poisson measure okay so now the question becomes the question becomes the, the following I want to consider a more abstract problem. I want to consider this problem. Uh, let R be a random isometry from LP of X, sorry, uh, LP of Y to LP of X, a random isometry. Okay, then take H, uh, some function in uh, probably the Okay, I, I write LP, but intersection of LP space. The question is the following. Under what conditions does delta of U, uh, delta of, sorry, delta of RH have same distribution, same law as the Poisson stochastic integral, the compensated Poisson stochastic integral of H. Okay, and to answer the qu this question, I'm going to use moments and recurrence relations and so on. So here I just re repeat the duality. There's a duality relation because everything we can realize on duality between D and delta. We also have the, the expected commutation relation, which is really like the, the CCR, canonical commutation relation. And now we look for an extension of the scored isometry. So how is this identity obtained? 
in a very simple, this identity is really simple to obtain. You just use induction again, just as in the Gaussian case. So you start from expectation of delta of u times delta of u to the power n. You say that this is expectation of u d delta of u to the power n, and and so on. So I don't want to write the detail here because it's a bit more complicated because d is a difference operator, not a derivation. So in, in the Gaussian case, in the Gaussian case, this is n times delta of u to the power n minus 1 d delta of u. In the Poisson case, this is no longer true because d is a finite difference operator. So things are a bit more complicated, but anyway, not, not so difficult. So we get this. Maybe what we should do is try to see what happens in the deterministic case when u is a deterministic function. When u is a deterministic function, we know that this delta is the Poisson stochastic integral of u. We also know that dt u is zero because u is deterministic. In this case, with the, if you observe this term, you see that this is equal to this when u is deterministic. And this actually vanishes, the lower part vanishes when u is deterministic. So this means that when u is a deterministic function, the Poisson stochastic integral satisfies this induction relation. And I'm going to write it down uh, separately because that's just a, an induction relation for the moments of Poisson stochastic integrals. That means expectation of an integral of some function f, dw minus d sigma, to the power n plus 1 is equal to the sum for, from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of binomial coefficient times I can take this quantity out when u or f is deterministic. So I, I take it out. I get the ordinary integral of f of t to the power n minus k plus 1, sigma of dt. So that's a moment of f. And here I get the moment of the stochastic integral, but only of order, uh, order k. Okay. And k is strictly smaller than n. Uh, actually, there's, um, so I learned the moments of the Poisson law, I mean the, just the standard Poisson distribution, satisfy a similar recurrence identity. And uh, I learned recently that there is actually a class of polynomials named after a Canadian mathematician whose name is Touchard. And those polynomials are precisely defined using this type of recurrence relation. That means Tn plus 1 of x is sum n minus 1 nk. And here there must be a coefficient lambda here. And here T, uh, Tk of x. Those are the two sharp polynomials. And they give the moments of the Poisson distribution. So I didn't know this. I find this in Wikipedia. Okay. There's a page, a Wikipedia page about uh, about Tusha, and you can find the information on this page. So this identity, in fact, just generalizes the the recurrence identity of Tusha polynomials to Poisson stochastic integrals. And we we know what to do now. In case we wish to show that delta of u has same law as a Poisson stochastic integral, we just need to show that this quantity vanishes. In this case, we will get the recurrence relation of Poisson stochastic integrals. Okay. And then we will know by moment characterizations that delta of u has the same law as a Poisson stochastic integral. But for this, we need to work a little bit more. Because, OK, I can say the following. Uh, in case in case the moments of u are deterministic and equal the moments of some function f okay I, in this case and if in addition this term vanishes then we are done delta of u has the moments of the poisson stochastic integral okay but the problem is that this, this is not practicable because i'm saying this this term vanishes, but under which conditions that this term vanishes, this is completely unclear. So we need to work a little bit more 
on this moment identity. Uh, so I, I'm sorry, I, sh I should use this, the slides. Everything is prepared in, in the slides. So uh, the moments of the Poisson stochastic interval satisfy this recurrence identity. And this is the kind of recurrence identity we want to, to reach. And okay, just uh, what I said, in case we want to show that delta of u has same moments as the Poisson stochastic integral of f, we need to show that the moments of delta of u satisfy this interaction relation that characterizes the distribution. Well, in the Poisson case, I should say that this does not always characterize the distribution. We need Kahneman's condition, but at least in some, in many situations, this does characterize the distribution. Okay. So this is some notation because now we need to work a little bit more on the moment identity. Uh, I don't want to spend time on this. This is just a symbolic notation. I just want to say that delta here is some operator or some notation which is used, which is defined using different operators. Okay, now this is the moment identity on the Poisson space. It looks more complicated than on the winner space because as I said, on the winner space, D, the operator D has the derivation property. So we can apply Leibniz rules. We can do a lot of calculus, which is not the possible in the Poisson, Poisson case due to the use of, of finite difference operators. So this is how the moment identity looks like. Um, well, there is some progress with this identity because what we know is that we want this term to vanish. In case this term vanishes, delta of Rh, where R is some random isometry, we have the same moments as the Poisson stochastic integral of the deterministic function H. Okay. Uh, so how to write a result, a theorem, or, or, or a proposition? It's quite easy. We just say, assume that uh, Rh is a random isometry and this term vanishes. Those are our conditions. But again, this is not practicable because who knows when this term vanishes. So if we want to be more specific, we, of course we can assume that this expectation vanishes, which is still not very interesting. We can assume that almost surely the integral in, inside this term vanishes, or we can assume that delta zero, delta j of this quantity vanishes, which is still not very clear. What does this mean, by the way? See, uh, here is some rational coefficient, which is uh, a bit difficult to write, but I omit it. That's just a deterministic rational coefficient. So maybe we can remember the, the Gaussian case. In the Gaussian case, we had two conditions. The first condition was to have a random isometry, and second condition was to have a vanishing of trace. So in the Gaussian case, Uh, R from L2 of R plus Rd into Rd was a random isometry. And we had a trace condition. Now I'm going to write the trace condition in the Gaussian case in, uh, in an expanded way. The trace condition in, in the Gaussian case can be written like this. D T0 Rh of T1, D T1 Rh of T2, etc. And finally, um, D T n Rh of T0, D T0, D T n, this had to vanish. Okay. So what I would like to do is always be inspired by the Gaussian case. So what we can suspect is that well, we have some isometric condition, not just for L2, and not for vector-valued functions, but for real-valued function for all power p's, all powers p of those ranks. But if we want, we want to maybe look at the Gaussian case to, to get some help, uh, probably the condition should be the vanishing of some trace in this sense. So, since assuming that this term vanishes is really not satisfying, we would like to rewrite this condition using some trace. And it works. It 
works in some so so here I just repeat the same thing if this vanishes then we have the correct uh, induction relation and the correct moment moments uh, now th this is the result in fact uh, saying that this complicated quantity vanishes there's a sufficient not necessary condition sufficient condition which looks like this somehow it can be simplified and this is a cyclic condition so you see uh, cyclic in the sense that here you start with 0 1 and you end up with 0 here again it makes a cycle from 1 to 2 3 4 5 up to k and then you go back to 1 okay. but the condition uh, it is not uh, sufficient if the condition holds in integrated form we need the condition to hold pointwise for all t1, t2, tk and for all k, I'm sorry, here should be k greater than 2 okay, so this is a simplified condition and it looks a little bit like the trace condition although this is not the vanishing of a trace uh, if we want some analog this is the trace the trace is the integral over uh, diagonal coefficients, diagonal matrix coefficients. Here, the analogy would be to say it's not the integral over diagonal coefficients with, which vanishes; it is the diagonal coefficients who vanish. Okay, so the condition is stronger, but this is the result. As long as R is a random isometry for, let's say, all powers of p satisfying this cyclic vanishing condition then the squared integral of RH has the same distribution as the Poisson stochastic integral of H okay. and we are going to use this result for uh, an invariance result in the Poisson case so now I go back to this setting the setting of a transformation of the Poisson configuration points and what I want to do I wonder how to apply the preceding result to, to this setting So what we know is, so far is this, in case R is a random isometry for, uh, I think it should be Y here, Y mu to LP of X sigma, random isometry. Okay, satisfying some conditions, then delta of RH, delta of R. RH has same distribution as the Poisson stochastic integral of H. Okay, now how to apply this result to this situation? We want to build a random isometry R. What we have is this we have tau, a transformation from X to Y. We assume that it is random but almost surely maps sigma to mu so we have a space x with a measure sigma we have a space y with a measure mu we assume that tau almost surely maps sigma to mu in this case it is easy to define r r will be defined in this way rh is the composition of h with tau in this case automatically since tau sends sigma to mu um, R will become a, an isometry. So we can apply the preceding result to the transformation R given by composition of H and tau. Okay. So what the preceding result will tell us is that the fol is the following. In case tau is a random transformation of uh, from X to Y, which maps sigma to mu almost surely, and if it satisfies this cyclic condition, then tau star, the mapping on configurations, maps the Poisson measure with intensity sigma to the Poisson measure with intensity mu. Okay, so the, the proof of, of this result is done by letting R uh, the proof of this result is done by let, defining RH as H composed with tau this gives an isometry 
Now, can we check the cyclic condition? We need the, the cyclic condition to be satisfied. But the cyclic condition says that drh, dt1rh of t2, etc., dtkrh of t1 is 0. Okay, so this should be, I should rewrite it by saying what r is. So this means dt1rh of tau of t2, etc., dtk h of tau of t1. This should be 0. Okay. This makes sense. What I'm saying is that under this condition, it's not difficult to check under this condition, in fact, uh, under this condition, this identity will hold for all h. Now, there's a question. Uh, there's a question because you see uh, y is some abstract metric space. There's no addition. It's not a linear space. So of course you, you may wonder how to define a finite difference taking values into y, how to define a product of terms into y. We don't need to, to define such things. Uh, the, the meaning of this is just that for at least one component, the gradient vanishes. The gradient vanishes means the two quantities are equal. So al although we don't have addition and uh, uh, multiplication by scalars in Y, we know what it means for two terms to be equal or not. So that means for at least one component of this in this product, the gradient is zero. That's the meaning of it. And uh, if this is satisfied, then we get this condition for all H. So the final step, we want to show that tau star maps omega X, uh, maps the Poisson measure on omega X Poisson measure on, on omega y. For this, we can use characteristic functions. For example, uh, it's not. I think it's not written here. Uh, what we can do is this. Uh, we can use the characteristic function of the Poisson measure. So we we look at this uh, this quantity. Okay. Now, if I uh, if here I I apply tau star to omega, okay. uh, that means I, I look at the transform Poisson measure. Uh, this will be, in fact, equal to expectation of I integral of H of tau, so H composed with tau, d omega minus d. Uh, here I, I write dt, but I should write d. Uh, it is. Uh, I don't know. It is sigma or it is nu. Uh, not very important. And there's something interesting, uh, a coincidence between Poisson and squared integral, which says that this will be essentially equal to the squared integral of H composed with tau. If you look at the, this uh, early slide on the definition of the squared integral, you see that it looks almost like uh, the Poisson stochastic integral, but under our cyclic condition, we will have the exact coincidence because the transformations we consider do not depend on the point T when, uh, okay. The, the randomness does not depend on T. So, um, so this is equal to this. And by the preceding result, since delta, the squared integral of H composed with tau has the the Poisson distribution, this will be equal to what you call exponential H d omega minus d nu, something like this, yes. Okay, so this is the, the characteristic function of the Poisson distribution. And this is the characteristic function of the transformed law. And they are equal. Okay. Yes. This one? This zero? Yes. Ah, here, you mean yeah, yeah. in the middle? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, that's a, a cycle. So. Yes, yes. 
so, uh, so we, we go from T1 to T2 to T3 to Tk minus 1 to Tk to T1. So that means the, the complete writing for this, this identity will be here dT1 tau of omega T2 and then dT2 of T of tau of omega t3 oh, and then yeah. from t3 to t4 okay. etc until we reach tk and when we reach tk we go back to t1 mm. and then this is mm. uh, no, yes then after tk we really go back to t1 mm. now what i should do is maybe uh, try to give some example because we have conditions and uh, is there any example that satisfies those conditions because it is well known that the Poisson measure will be invariant in the deterministic case but by the way is there just one example of a random transformation that maps one Poisson measure to the other so I it's not so easy to find examples uh, I found a few examples which I think are intuitive. So, what happens is this: uh, this is a, a let's say this is a Poisson uh, repartition of, of points in the plane. So we have the, the convex hull, which is here, and we have a white, so dark dots, black dots, and white dots, but they are all part of the same Poisson configuration. Uh, so the convex hull is made of the white dots and one example of a transformation that satisfies the, the above conditions is the following the, the transformation that leaves invariant the points of the convex hull and within the convex hull it maps randomly one point so it shifts the points randomly the randomness depending only on the positions on the convex hull. Okay, I think it's somehow intuitive that the, the transform points should remain Poisson. Of course, each the transformation that maps the points here should be measure preserving the, within this space. Okay. I think intuitively uh, it makes sense and uh, it seems to remain Poisson. Anyway, it satisfies, it's a bit difficult to, to state, it satisfies the, the, the previous conditions. So it should be an example. Okay, okay. so thank you, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs>